Let's get our attention into the last type of uh, reactor that we're going to be discussing in this class. Uh, back bed reactors are one of the kind of tubular reactor or flow reactors. Uh, the main characteristics of, uh, of this type of reactor is that it occurs under heterogeneous phase system. Uh, it involves fluid solid heterogeneous, heterogeneous reactions. Also, it takes a reaction takes place on the surface of the catalyst. So you can imagine that the mass of the given catalyst now uh, is an important factor instead of the volume as the other flow reactors. So let's see the different mole balance and assumptions and important factors, and then we're going to discuss a little bit of uh, some of the reactors and conclusions on all the mole balances to proceed to the next part of the class. So when you talk about a packed bed reactor, catalysts are important, as I mentioned. Uh, we can in predict, right, that increasing the mass of the catalyst, we, uh, we can increase the performance, right, of the reaction or the conversion because the reactants will be interacting with more catalysts on the react in the reactor we call mass of the catalyst or we uh, label it as w that's going to be one of the design parameters that we're going to be looking at when we talk about pbrs uh, the other way that we can uh, uh, talk about a catalyst is that we can also increase the reactive surface area per gram uh, per mass of catalyst or we can also increase the active side of surface uh, of the surface per uh, mass of the catalyst. These are important considerations if you are thinking in the future to do research on catalysis. A lot of the nanotechnology um, uh, innovations uh, concerning catalysts involve increasing the surface area or increasing the number of, of active sites. There's a lot of research on trying to understand these mechanisms and characterize these materials, and I recommend you to look for it, and there's a couple of professors here on campus that actually work with that. So we can define the rate of uh, reaction for an heterogeneous system as uh, the mole of A reacting times over the time times the mass of the catalyst. We can also see right here that we can get the regular rate by just multiplying the heterogeneous rate by the bulk density of the catalyst. Okay. If you notice uh, in this uh, definition, we can see that the reactor volume that contains the catalyst is of, se of secondary significance. So now we're going to spend um, some time uh, trying to derive uh, an expression that uh, helps us to identify the mass of the catalyst for a PBR reactor. I want to show you uh, figure 113 from your book. Uh, this schematic, this is an schematic of an industrial catalyst reactor with vertical tubes packed with solid catalysts. So there's a couple of things that you have to notice. The feed gas is coming from the bottom in this particular schematic, and the products are being uh, ex uh, uh, produced right on the top of the reactor. That means that the catalyst tube, which is represented by this gray tube going in this direction, the, the reactant is passing through these tubes and then the products are being uh, produced at the end. Uh, make sure that you remember always that we try to make these models uh, ideal, which means that as engineers we have to spend a lot of time to make sure that we control temperature. Remember that we're working on uh, isothermal reactors. Uh, we try to improve the way the coolant in this case, case is actually going through the reactors. And in, in this particular schematic, you can see the coolant side baffles, which just go around, right? And uh, uh, go through all the reactor to try to control temperature. Remember, there are always temperature gradients, and we're gonna see at the end of the course examples when heat transfer is an important parameter uh, for the reactor design. If 
We remember for the other type of flow reactors, we are uh, we worked or developed a more balance in uh, so for the reactor volume or the volume where the reaction is happening. However, for a PBR, we will focus on the mass of the catalyst. However, the, the math behind it, the analytical solution, looks very similar to the model of the ideal PBR. So let's consider uh, the following reactor. We have, in this case, the, let me change color here, the, the flow of uh, reactant A by entering the reactor, okay, which is going to be the initial molar uh, flow of reactant A. And then at the end of the reactor, we have whatever is left right on reactor of reactant A. So in, in, as, uh, in difference, you know, compared to the other model, instead of having a differential element that is in terms of volume, now we're more concerning, concerned, I'm, I'm sorry, about the mass of the catalyst that is in this mass differential element. So if we uh, look at it, we have to uh, make sure that before we start doing the mole balance, we go back again to the assumptions. Remember, in this case, we have an um, isothermal reactor. We have isothermal reactor, okay? We also assume no radial gradients okay in concentration temperature or reaction rate once we do that we can start doing the mass uh, balance uh, or mole balance in this case uh, in this elemental in this different di differential element uh, we have the, the flow entering to that uh, element, the differential element is uh, Fa uh, W, right, minus the Fa exiting, right, that uh, differential element, okay, plus the generation of uh, Ra, of, of reactant A, delta W equals, or species A equals to zero, we are assuming no accumulation okay um, here we divide we divide by delta w we rearrange and then we take the limit limit where delta w tends to zero and we end up having an expression right the differential form of the above expression and arranging that to have an expression for the heterogeneous rate of reaction. Another big assumption for the ideal gas model uh, for PBRs is that we are assuming that the pressure drop, there's no pressure, I'm sorry, there's no pressure drop, okay? And the other thing that we are assuming is that the catalyst, no catalyst deactivation. Okay, I wanna make sure that um, you realize that in this class, we will see deviations of the ideal model where we will have delta P equals to something. There's gonna be a pressure drop, uh, over the uh, differential element here, and the catalyst will deactivate eventually. So one of the important uh, aspects of you know a chemical engineer is to actually predict this deactivation, or maybe select a catalyst that lasts long enough to have as much uh, delta P equals to zero, right? To for there's no uh, clogging or falling of the catalyst, and also that the rate is not changing, right? Because it, the spaces or the the surface area allowed for the reaction are being clogged throughout time. 
Concluding with this analysis, we get that the W, right, which is the mass of the catalyst in the reactor, equals to the equals to So this can be considered to be the mole balance or the design equation uh, in terms of uh, moles for the ideal, ideal BBR. Okay, remember the assumptions and the conditions for these reactors are in, uh, reactors are important. Uh, an important aspect for the PBR also is that there is no uh, pressure drop and there is no catalyst deactivation. Okay, uh, this equation tells us, right, give us information about what is the catalyst weight necessary to reduce the entering molar flow down to a flow rate of Fa. Okay, now I'm going to show you a little bit of the the all the mole balances and then we're gonna move on and start creating similar equations, design equations, but now with the conversion term. So as, uh, to conclude, right, the mole balance, uh, here you have the uh, generalized forms for the four common reactors that we cover and we're gonna use or start using this and uh, express all of these uh, equations uh, in terms of conversion and we're gonna dedicate uh, the rest of the videos on doing this. Um, once again uh, we have the mole balance in the differential form and we typically try to uh, define by the flow in terms of moles or concentration it depends on what we're doing and then we try to uh, express the rate of reaction and we learn how to get that from mechanisms. We can, uh, it can be given to you. You can infer that from the statement, maybe the units of K. There's always a way to get information about R, uh, the rate of reaction. Um, the other thing is that um, you have to typically focus on the limiting reactant and we're going to see that in the next uh, common uh, couple of videos and, and topics. Uh, again, there's the, the, the only reaction or the, I'm sorry, the only uh, reactor actually has an algebraic form is the CS, CSTR. So uh, we don't need to use uh, inter, in integration factors or uh, solutions uh, depending on the order of the reaction. Pretty much we can use this straightforward. Uh, and then depending on the type of reaction, we are gonna get the inter, integral form, right? Uh, that will be based on what is the criteria for that particular reactor. Uh, one important aspect that we're gonna see in the next videos are and the classes is that we will try to combine different ways of, uh, you know, diff combine different reactors to try to get the highest conversion. And we're going to spend a lot of time on that because we want to design not only one reactor, but actually a process, a couple of reactors maybe, right, that can improve the co overall conversion of the species A that Based on that, we can get how much we're getting on the product. Remember that we can always relate one species with the other in a chemical reaction. Um, so this is the final video. Uh, stay tuned for the rest of the videos for this part.